Hey guys, welcome to another episode of A Shot of Ruby. And in this episode, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to integrate Framework 7 right here into a Rails app and how to set it all up with the JavaScripts and the CSS and all that stuff. So before we get started, uh, if you haven't already, go ahead and download. Uh, so once you click download, you're gonna be taken to the GitHub page, click on the releases, and then just click on download whichever flavor you want. And what you're gonna do is once you extract all that, what you're gonna get is this directory structure right here. Now, what you're gonna be focusing on is this particular folder, dist underscore rails. You're gonna to wanna to copy everything in the images folder and uh, just the framework7.js, just this one file from the JavaScripts folder and framework7.css from the style sheets folder. And you wanna copy all that into your vendor directory in your Rails app, right? So I've done it already here. So all the images are here and the JavaScript framework 7.js, right? I don't want the minimized version, the same for the CSS. I just want the full version because Rails in production is gonna compile all that stuff for me. So I don't wanna have a compiled version, right? And you know, I like to being able to read the source code. So that's why I prefer always to work with the full version and not the minimized version. All right, so once we have that, what we're gonna do is in their assets over here, I'm gonna create a new folder in the JavaScripts. So a new folder here, I'm gonna call it phone, right? And I'm gonna create a new file, right? It's called phone. And same for the style sheets. But for the style sheet, I'm gonna create a new file in the style sheets folder called phone.sass. So very simply, uh, one thing before we go ahead and import framework seven. I'm just gonna create another file in the phone directory for the style sheets. I'm gonna call it base. And in the phone directory in the JavaScript, I'm gonna create one called setup. So I'm gonna tell you guys what we're gonna do with these files later. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna require them. So I'm gonna go ahead and do require framework seven. And the same for the phone.sass. I'm just gonna do an import framework seven, just like that. And basically, once we have that, uh, you know, framework seven is pretty much set up in our application. Well, not set up, but you know, imported and you know, integrated so and before everything. Before we do anything, we need to uh, put in some boilerplate code in our application layout for the phone version, right? So I've already prepared and sliced up and diced up and you know, made it nice and convenient for you guys. So I'm just gonna copy it over from here. There's not really much going on here. It's just boilerplate code that we set up, you know, like the particular, like little basic, you know, thing, mundane things that you have to set up, like the Fevicon. Um, let me explain a little bit about what this Apple Touch icon precompose does. So basically, uh, when you have a HTML app and you're loading in your mobile browser, you can add that app to the home screen. And when you do that, it's gonna need an icon, right? So it's gonna try and replicate, you know, the when you have with the native apps, you have the icons, it's gonna use this icon here. So if you want, you can create a PNG file, um, you know, with this name, put it in your image assets, and it's gonna use this icon when you add that app to the home screen. Um, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with this in the Android world, but in the iOS world, you can do that, right? Okay, so, um, on Framework 7, uh, in our version that we're gonna try and, and work with, uh, we have the sidebar, right? So for example, if I click here, we have this sidebar here. I've got this thing set up here, render application phone left panel, right? So that's where I'm putting everything, right? I'm gonna go into my views application, new folder. I'm gonna create phone folder. And in here, I'm gonna create a left panel HTML.erb, and in here, uh, I'm gonna paste in the boilerplate code for the left panel. There's divs here like that. I'm gonna close out that div. So if you're wondering where I got all this stuff from, I just basically got it from the Framework 7's page through the documentation. They have really good documentation, so if you're wondering where I got all this from, you can go ahead and read it. You might need to do some modifications if you just copy and paste your code because, you know, the way rails works with all the layout and stuff is a little bit different but if you follow me um you're gonna have to do this just once in every app and you're gonna be good to go right um all right so that's will pretty much give us a basic uh setup right 
So the next thing we need to do is in the root page of our application, right? We're going to need to give put put in some boilerplate code in the view in the initial view when framework seven loads, right? We're going to have some boilerplate code there as well. So this is basically just the, you know, the boilerplate, the setup, the structure that is needed uh, for framework seven to, to work. It's going to need to be in this particular structure because that's what framework seven is going to look for. So the next thing we need to do is we're going to need to have, um, so over here, let me just head over to the browser. So you see this nav bar here, it's divided into three regions, right? The left, the center, and the right. And the way you control that is very simple. You just do div class left for the left side, and you can put whatever you want in here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put in an icon, right? Like a very simple icon. Uh, so for example, H a H R E F class link icon only open panel. So this is what's going to open the left panel that we just filled out before, uh, you know, the left, panel that comes on the, on the left hand. So this is going to be the link to that. And inside, I'm just going to do I class icon and icon. So framework seven comes with a few icons built in, right? If you want to know where it is, uh, simply head on to the vendor. So this is what I'm talking about, reading the code, being able to read the code. So I'm just type into a search for icon. So here uh, we have a list of icons that we can simply use, right? So I'm just going to go down. So the, here icons under these comments, uh, I'm going to use this icons bars blue, right? So you have access to all these icons, right? So if, if you want, you can pick whichever one you like, but I'm going to go with icon bars blue for now. Whoops. So I'm going to close that out. And I'm going to create another div here called center. So this is going to have the title, right? The title of our site. So I'm going to call this maybe um, all posts, maybe. So basically that's the basic setup that is going to give, you know, the, the basic structure that our app needs to have for framework seven to work like HTML wise. Anyway, um, that's basically going to be the layout. So let me change the title. So blog me now. And, uh, you know, this is going to be the JavaScript. All the JavaScript include is right here. Uh, the style sheet link tag is here. So basically these are going to import all the assets we set up before, right? Um, so I'm not going to use analytics. If you, if you use analytics, you can just import it right here. Um, so this should give us, uh, you know, the basic structure to our application, right? So let's go ahead and, uh, head to the browser and I'm going to do a reload real quick. And basically this is what it should look like right now. Once you've set everything up, got everything imported, it's going to look something like this. And you may wonder why, when I click on that, does it not work? And when I, and why isn't this, shouldn't this be in the center? Well, you're right. I mean, this should be in the center, but framework seven is not fully initialized just yet. What we need to do now to get everything working correctly is we need to initialize framework seven in with JavaScript. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a global object. So this object is basically going to hold you know, some of the sub objects that we're going to use, like for example, the framework seven app that we're going to initialize. So it'll be more clear in, in a, in a few minutes, let's start. So I'm going to have the app instance. So new framework seven. So that's going to instantiate the framework seven app for us. And we're going to be able to access it using this F seven H dot app. Now framework seven comes with a Dom library built in which means you don't need to use jQuery to do all the DOM manipulation stuff. Framework 7 already has that built in and we're going to assign that to the DOM uh, object. And uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to do framework 7 dot and then the dollar sign. So now that's pretty much it in terms of setting up the basic framework 7. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to set up kind of like the, the, the view 
the main view, right? So Framework 7 requires that we initialize a main view. So we have this div over here. It's called, it's, it's got the class view hyphen main. So basically this is going to be the main view where, um, you know, the framework seven is going to look at it. It's going to look at all the stuff that we instantiate. So this yield is going to call, for example, the index. So basically all the stuff that you're looking at over here is going to be viewed as the main view, right? All the elements you just saw over there. So we need to create the main view. Now, before we do that, well, let's create a, a phone, like a, a global namespace for our phone uh, JavaScript code, right? So I'm going to call window.phone equals and then views. So this is just going to be the phone.views object, basically. Uh, and now we can instantiate our view. We can create our view. So phone.views.main equals. Now here's how we call the, the app that we just instantiated f7.h.app.add view. And then we're going to assign the view hyphen main. And we can pass options into this view, right? So the option I'm going to pass in is dynamic nav bar. All right, so once we have all this set up, this is basically the most minimal setup we can possibly do to get framework seven working right. And that's exactly what we want. All right, so now we need to include this setup file in our phone.coffee. So to do that, we're going to do require phone setup. All right, so I think we're good to go. Let's give it a shot. Reload. Bam. Check that out. All posts is now in the center and we've got the button here. And if I click on it, the left panel shows. I click on it again, it closes. We've now set everything up the way that it needs to be set up, but we haven't really done anything to create or, you know, we haven't actually done anything to our application. It's just an empty, you know, frame, right? So what we're going to be doing in the next episode is we're going to implement the, you know, we're going to list out the listings of posts that we have. And when we click on that post, you know, it's going to go to the full page post very much like this one here. So we have a list of posts here and I can, click on one of them and then I can see the, the full post. So I know there was a lot of copying and pasting and there was a lot of boilerplate code in, in this episode. I'm sorry about that, but we just have to get through it. So what I've done is I've created a full post on the codemy.net website and you guys can check out the link in the description below. So if you click on that link, you'll see all the boilerplate code that you have to just copy and paste. So you guys can actually get through this really, really quickly. Uh, with that post. And I've also added a link to the Framework 7 documentation for you guys in the description. So check that out as well. All right, guys, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next episode.